Welcome to the Network Engineering Video Blog. I am your host, Michael Crane. In this lengthy follow-up to video number 82, Making an Isolated Ground Cyber Power PDU, we go full Monty by stripping the old AC receptacles out of our Cyber Power PDU and replacing them with the Levington 5362-IG isolated ground receptacles, okay? The problem is, the footprints of the new receptacles are not the same as the old receptacles. So we have to do some customizing to our new Levington, Levington receptacles. Uh, but we've got to make it work, right? So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start converting this thing. So, excuse the reach. I'm going to grab my screw gun here and kind of speed things up a little bit. And I'm just going to start with the case screws. All right. I'll pull the cover off this guy. Okay. Since we're going to go ahead and replace this ground wire, I'm just going to go ahead and, and clip it off. Okay. Okay, excuse the reach. So I clip this guy off. Now I'm going to save the nut and the shake proof washer in case one of these days I want to convert it back. All right. I'll move that off to the side. Okay. And we've got another one down in there. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me see if I can zoom in. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's right down there. Now this one's a little harder to get the <laughs> get the wrench in there, so I'm gonna go ahead and clip them off because I am going not gonna use that that eye that um, eye connector. Okay. And now I'm gonna go ahead and and pull the receptacles out. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, oops, remove the screws. Now, when I did this originally, <laughs> I was trying to figure out the puzzle of how to get this guy out, or, or should I try pulling this one out before pulling these out, or try and pull these out before pulling this out? And I, I played around with it for, <laughs> I don't know, 20 minutes, and I finally determined that I can't get either one of them out the way it is. And I'm not exactly sure how they manufactured this, but my guess, is that it was spread apart a little bit when they assembled it. So that's what I'm going to do. Now to keep from scratching the enclosure, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap a little tape around it. That should be enough. Now I'm gonna very gently Get in there, and it doesn't really matter if I put it on the connector or not, or the receptacle, but I do want the bottom of the jaw as close as possible to this corner right here, because otherwise I'll, I'll put a crease in the middle and we won't be able to straighten that out. So I'm gonna get in there the best I can, gently pull it out just a tad. I'm just going to go down. I'm just doing it a little bit, as you can see. That's going along here. All right. Maybe a little bit more right here. You don't want to do it too much because we got to push it, get it back into place. All right. That looks pretty good. Yeah, you can see I kind of... Hey, I got too high up on this, kind of dented it. 
Well, hopefully it, we won't see that when we're done. Yeah, you just have to be real careful when doing this. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if we can get these guys out. Yeah, you want to keep these, so don't throw those out or damage them. And we are going to reuse them. Okay, we're getting there. There. So let's keep all these guys. And if you're wondering what these are, these go over the, the screw connectors. Also covers this little tab right here, which is, is electrically active. I'm I'm surprised it, it's even up there like that, but yeah, it's, they definitely wanted to cover that up because it's getting real close to the enclosure, as you'll see when we go to install the isolated ground receptacles. Now, I'm not going to do a full teardown, but I will take a picture of this, and we'll see if we can um, I identify some of this. But Oh, and on, on the other side of that, <laughs> see these jumpers right here? So you've got a jumper, jumper right there, and a jumper right there. You see these jumpers right here? Well, if you flip this guy over, those actually go up into this receptacle right here and are mounted <laughs> to, to this receptacle. Yeah, check this out. This is, this is kind of clever, I guess. Um, when I was first taking this apart, I couldn't figure out how, why, how that receptacle was tied to that board and vice versa. See? Look at that. Yeah, that's, that's pretty clever. Right, let's zoom back out here. Okay. So let's go ahead and finish disassembling this guy. So I, I know, because I've already done one of these, that I'm not going to reuse this ground wire right here. So I am going to clip that out. And we'll go ahead and remove. This is, this is, these are all just tied in series right here. This is the output from the, uh, the surge protector. Okay. <laughs> They've got these things jammed in there, so this is actually stranded wire that they've soldered and literally shoved in these holes. <laughs> but uh, I mean, it's okay. It's it's probably not the the cleanest looking job, but I guess it's okay. Okay, so we've got this right here. I shouldn't be using these little cutters for that. I should be using my my lineman's pliers. All right. You don't want to cut this one too short right here. We're going to reuse that wire. But this this ground right here this whole set of ground wires with these with these uh, connectors on there we're not going to reuse uh, because of space inside there and, and you'll see later that uh, they, they look all pretty good this one is barely hanging on there but it's okay they've got it all shrink wrapped it's all very nice this looks all nice and neat so when we are going to reuse these wires so i'm going to keep those Let's see, what else we got here, folks? Okay, let's go ahead and now we can get to this guy pretty easy. I'll take him out. All right. So, let's see here. We need to, uh, I guess we'll go ahead and pull this ground off real quick. We can just throw this guy away. We're not going to reuse it in this video. 
All right, so now what we've got to do is I'm going to start moving the wires from here, from the old receptacles to the new receptacles. But first, we've got to do some modifications to the new receptacles. Okay, so let's see if I can zoom in here. So that's the, the old receptacle. This one came out of the other box, or the other PDU, I mean. Here's the new receptacle. And, and there's a few differences. And I looked and looked. I probably spent an hour on the internet trying to find an isolated ground receptacle like this, or an isolated ground receptacle in this form factor. And I could not find it. So, uh, these are pretty close right here. These are uh, Levington, I believe. Just to remind you, an isolated ground. So this ground right here is not connected in any way to this mount, this mount, or this mount. Now, these mounts are tied together, and that's very easy to see on the back. <laughs> so here's the little tabs for for the middle mount, and of course it's just one piece of metal that's been bent over like that. Is that a better view? So, neither this ground or this ground is tied to any of these. Now, with this guy right here, you can clearly see there's a ground screw. It's just one piece of metal right there. There's the, the mount for the middle right there. You can see it's just a block pressed in there, it looks like. And, and these two right here, these uh, brass rivets, it looks like, are tied to the ground. So the, these two grounds and these are, are all tied together, right? So we need to make this guy more like this guy. So we're going to have to remove these, these mounting tabs. We don't need them anyway because it mounts in the middle. And you can see that... Let's see if I can get a good shot of this. Well, you might not be able to see it on camera. The ISG receptacle has these like protectors right here. This is to, you know, protect the screws from hitting the side of the case, right? So if you have a metal box, it protects it. But I, I learned when I was doing the first one that these are too big, so we need to cut them down a little bit. And I've got an example right here of one that fits, and the E is for example. <laughs> so what we need to do, and hopefully you can see this, is we need to shave these guys down, right? And we need to remove the mounting tabs right here on both sides. And we also, and this example doesn't have it, we also need to remove this little this little brass plate right there, okay? And we need to do that so when we put the wire around the screw, just like they used to do in the olden days, but when we tighten it down, we want it, we don't want it poking out beyond this, I don't know, protection ridges. I really don't know what to call them. <laughs> okay, does that make sense? All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the camera out into our workshop and we're going to modify some of these, all right? Okay, so we're out in the, I'll call it the workshop, AKA the garage. And uh, okay, let's start, start uh, getting these things fixed up, shall we? First thing we need to do is remove the screw. And it's got keepers on these screws, that's why they don't fall out. I didn't know why. So I'm just gonna push them through. So I can get a grip on them and yank them out. All right. And I might as well do them all while I'm thinking about it. All right. And of course we have the example, which is already done. Okay. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to cut the tabs off and I'm going to use my little Dremel tool right here. 
And this is kind of a little metal cutting blade. It feels like it's made out of some kind of stone. All right, I'm right-handed, so let me see if I can set this up and, and do this so everyone can see. Okay, so I'm not actually cutting all the way through. Let's see if I can... I'm, I'm just, I don't know if you can see it on camera. I'm just scoring it, okay? Just enough so when I, yeah, see it's not snapping right. I want it so when I first bend it down, it should start breaking. So I didn't score it enough, so we need to score it just a little bit more. Okay, here, let's try this again. All right. There we go. Yeah, see that felt really soft. Don't try to break these off without scoring it first because these things are, are used to hold this receptacle together and you'll bend it all up and yeah, it's, it's not pretty, all right? And we're gonna come back and blow all the dust off these as soon as we're done, all right? All right, excellent. So now what I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna remove this, this cutting blade and I'm gonna put the sand disc on there, <laughs> for lack of a better term. I, and that's for the, uh, the plastic keep outs. Let's just call them a keep out, that makes sense. Okay, so I've changed bits out. And what I'm gonna do is very carefully just take this and and grind these keep outs down to the same size as, as the example I showed you earlier. All right, all right, so let's go. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take my knife and, and deburr the, the edges on these keep outs. Okay. And after I clean them, loose strands off, get them all cleaned up, I'm just going to take some canned air here and blow them all out. There you go. All right. Okay. So we've got the, the new Leviton Isolated ground plugs all modified. Uh, well, almost all modified and ready for installation. We need to take these little, I don't know what these are called. It's, it's so you can put two, two wires in there, but it's, it's adding too much height to our screw right here. And uh, we're, we're <laughs> as you can see, we're, we're really struggling for height. And that's what's nice and bad about this PDU. A lot of PDUs, these one U uh, PDUs, will only have like single plugs right here, and it's because it's hard to squeeze something like this into this small of a form factor. As you can tell, it's <laughs> you know the plug itself is using that pretty much one U. Anyway, let's go ahead and remove all these.
So anyway, that's what I'm gonna do. I, I'm not, I'm gonna stop. I'll do this off camera. No one's really interested in seeing me do this. And uh, I'll be back. Alrighty, so I've got them all removed. They can just go in the trash or the recycle bin. All right, so now we are ready to start moving the wires. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to take them apart one at a time and then just start assembling these just exactly the way these are set up. I will need to modify the wire a little bit, so let's get started. Okay, so I readjusted the, the camera a little bit. I noticed when I was reviewing some of the, the video, my hand was getting in the way of, of the lens and it was actually focusing on my hand and <laughs> not on what I'm doing. Since we don't have those, those little keepers or whatever they're called uh, to hold these wires like so, I'm going to have to bend loops in them, all right? And I'll try to do this on camera where everyone can see. So first, I'm gonna straighten it up a little bit. And I need a little bit more wires for the, our loops. This is 12 gauge wire. I can get that off there, there we go. My 12 gauge just does not, on these strippers, just doesn't seem to work too good. It's probably worn out. There we go. Okay, so that should be enough. So we want our, our receptacles like this. And we want the wire, so when we tighten them up, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, we want the wire to wrap around this way. So I need to bend my, my loops, I guess, to the left, okay? Let's see if I can show you how to do this. All right. Okay. And I know they're not complete loops, but as you'll see, it's it's kind of hard to get these in there, especially uh, if there's already wires connected. So we just need to use these partials and get down in there. But you can see, I, I, it's got a pretty good bite on the wire. It's, it's got most of it under there. I mean, I've seen people do almost complete loops with them, which would be, that would be okay. I guess I could pull these screws out and try to do something like, you know, screw it back in. But I don't think it's, I don't think it's, I think this is a good enough bite for what we're doing. I mean, it's definitely more of a bite. <laughs> if you think about it, it's definitely more of a bite going from here, looped around here, than it is just going straight down like it would be underneath that metal, that metal tab, right? Or that metal keep. So make sure they're nice and tight. Okay. And I'm just gonna, now I'm gonna do the other side. I don't know how to do this where you can see. Oops. <laughs> so I'm just going to put just the tip of my lineman's pliers and just turn it like that. And then 
Let's see, does this work better? And turn it like that. And you can use your lineman's pliers to kind of straighten them up a little bit. And you can make the loop a little bit smaller if you need to. I think those will be that'll be okay. And we just oops. Gotta put it on there the right direction. Okay. And we'll put this one on. Let's see. You might need to uh Need some adjustment on these guys to get it down in there. It'd be easier if it was sitting right in front of me. That's why I'm, I'm struggling to do this because I'm trying not to cover the camera up at the same time I'm uh, trying to put it together. This one's gonna need a little help. Okay. So you can see I got it, I got it down in there. It's not tight yet. Make sure all the adjustments are okay. You, you definitely don't want the insulation underneath the screw. All right, and you also don't want it pulled too far back either because then it could ac accidentally touch on something else. But I think we're good there. So I'm gonna tighten them up. There we go. All right, now for the next ones. Okay, so now that that's done, let's get our ground on there. This is this is going to be a little bit different than than the common and the um, or the neutral and the the line voltage wires because there's only one screw and it only really holds. It was only originally designed to hold one wire, <laughs> but we've got to make it hold two wires. So I. I'm going to get some number 12 ground wire. I don't know if you can read that. Anyway, it's solid core, 12 gauge. And I'm just going to, I'm going to cut a little bit of extra right here. And I'm going to bend it up. Now, so what I'm going to do on this one is since it's only as one, it's got a, 
it's got a hole right here. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, it's got a hole right there to slide a wire up underneath there. Okay, so you can stick the wire off in there and, and this tightens up on it. But we also want to use the top side. Now, so for the first one, I guess I should say the last one, if they're sitting in there like this, then this is, to me, this is the last one. This is the first one. So this one we can, we can go just straight you know, hole to hole. But these others, I'm gonna have to put two wires on, right? And what I learned is it's easier to put the looped wire in the top and then put the straight wire in the bottom. So in other words, it's gonna go loop, straight, loop. It's gonna go, this is gonna be straight, straight, then loop, straight, um, yeah, loop, to straight and loop to straight and loop <laughs> to straight and you'll see what I'm talking about when we start doing this so okay that's first off let's go ahead and this is gonna be the simple one straight to straight so it's gonna go in there like that now we need to come down to about right there bend it up And if you notice, I'm cutting it a little bit longer before I strip it. And I do this, and yeah, I'm gonna have some scrap, but it, it really, if you try cutting and doing all this stuff without any waste, you're gonna have lots of waste because you're gonna mess up here, it's not gonna be bent right, you need to trim a little more. And um, it's just, believe me, it, it can be a hassle. All right, so this one is odd man out because it's just straight to, whoop. Yeah, see, I even made this one too long. Look at that. All right, let's trim this guy down about right there. Looks good. Now, let's see. Oh, did I make it too short? <laughs> That's okay. Wow. See what I mean? It's, um... Uh, So you definitely want to give yourself some some extra. There we go. That looks pretty good, right? You don't want the plastic up underneath the conductor. There we go. Okay. Now this one I can tighten up. As he is done. And you can put a good amount of torque on these things, and, and you want to because... You don't, you don't want your, your, <laughs> your um, conductors falling off. Okay, so this one we need a loop and a straight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut some wire, plenty of wire, okay? This one's gonna be a loop. So I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of extra there. Strip it off. I want a little bit of, a little bit of plastic right there. All right, that's probably a little too long for our loop. About right, yeah, about right there. Okay. All right. Maybe tighten it up a little bit. Okay. Now we got to get it underneath this guy. And this is not as easy as it sounds. Whoops. Okay, yeah, so see how it fell out? Now, the way this thing works is, is it's got a little plate on the bottom that, that when you tighten the screws up, it sucks up against this uh, brass conductor right there. Well, when it's, when you pull the screw out, you can't just stick this on there and put the screw in there because the screw's not long enough with the wire under it to 
to reach that metal plate. So you got to hold it upside down. And, oop, and you need at least a couple threads in this uh, ground screw to to hold it in place. Okay, you know, like that. So now I've got a couple threads in there. I, I just need it to hold it in place long enough to so I can get this conductor in there. Let's see, I got too many threads in there. Eek. Here, let me, I need to tighten this loop up a little bit. There we go. Well, oh no, is it coming out? Ah! Yeah, this, this is not the easy, <laughs> this is not easy. Come on, you can get in there. Go on. Wow. That didn't go in there very smooth. That looks okay. All right. So, we got to get everything back in place here. Now we need another bend. See if I can get this right this time. Right there. That looks a little bit long. We'll try it. This one's gonna go down right, right there. Okay, straighten all this stuff out. Okay, yeah, I could have shortened this up a little bit. Maybe I should. And the reason why you want to shorten it up is, especially when you're going by this thing right here, this um, you know the protection circuitry is you don't want a bunch of wires, you know, pushing against all this stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim him a little bit more. Shorten this wire up. Okay. There we go. That's better. Okay. So we kinda go over and under. And I am not going to tighten this guy up because we need to put another one of these in there. The last thing you want to do before you stick this back in there is you need three leader wires. These are simple enough. You just, uh, well, let's start with a green. That's the hardest to do for sure. All right. Well, that one went on there surprisingly easy. Oops. 
Oh, I stand corrected. Yeah, this this is a really tight squeeze for this thing. But the good news is we're getting plenty of threads on it, so I'm not worried that it's going to fall off or doesn't have a good connection. It's just not easy to put together. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to run it straight out that way. Straight to the left. All right. And let's see. We might as well do the white since we've, or the common or neutral, whatever you want to call it. Next. Ooh, that looks kind of long. Let's trim that guy down a little bit. There we go. Tighten them up. Oh, that's much easier. Okay, run them out the, to the left. And we'll do the, the line side. Oop. There we go. Tighten him up. Oh. There we go. Yeah. And I'm not going to install it right now, just be in the way while we're working, but it's ready to be installed. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the, our last receptacle here. So I guess we'll go ahead and get this guy mounted on next. This, this thing right here needs to be the isolated ground plug is a little bit wider, you know, just the outside part than the, uh, than the non one or the original one. And as you can see, the, the hole spacing right here is a little bit wider. These are closer together than, than these are going to be. And I, I could get a ruler, but believe me, <laughs> I've already, I've already done this. So what I'm going to do is very carefully bend these. They need to go, they need to spread out just a little bit. And they also need to go out this way. I don't want to say a lot, but. But, uh, but quite a bit. And unfortunately, we can't leave them angled like this. So <laughs> this is where it gets a little bit, a little bit tricky. So what I'm going to do is I want to put uh, an L bend of some, some kind in this. And I don't know how to explain it, so I'll just show it to you. So I want the bottom part to go out at a 45, and then I want the top to go up. Because um, we want it to go be perpendicular to the board. So you want out and up. Yeah, something like that. And you want it to be as close to the <laughs> to the PCB as possible, so when this when we put our new connector on there it mounts flat and doesn't push out too much let's see uh. all right let's see what that looks like kind of straighten them out a little bit can you kind of see the see how the angle going out and then up all right yeah, let's see, how does this guy mount on there? We want, let's see, it mounts like this. So the, the neutral's at the top. The neutral are this side right here. So we want it like mounted like this. And I'm going to slide these guys. There we go. So I got the neutral side in. Oh, didn't quite get all the, there we go. Yeah, see how it's pushing away from the PCB? So very carefully, I'm going to push down uh, on this because we want to hold it 
as close to the PCB as possible and then tighten these guys up. Okay. There you go. Okay, let's go ahead and strip this while I'm thinking about it. So we're gonna need a tie to that. All right, very good. I'll strip him while we're stripping stuff. There we go. I do believe we are ready to assemble. Okay, so before we assemble, I need to, um, we need to put these guys back on there. And the way, the easiest way I found to do it is, and, and what these are, these little plastic pieces, I don't know what kind of plastic it is. It feels very durable and it's probably made that way on purpose. You know, if any sharp pieces won't go through it, right? And it's, it's so it won't, so the, uh, the mains, uh, power lines won't touch the enclosure. Oh, I did see something we forgot. I need to put in a leader for this ground right here. Okay. So let me go get some wire. Alrighty. Sure, that's unscrewed. There we go. Make sure we don't have any insulation under the conductor. Tighten them up nicely. There we go. Okay. Where were we? Oh yeah, we were um, putting these plastic. Uh, I don't know what to call them. Conductor protection. <laughs> pieces and uh, like I said I, what I do is I I hold them on with a screw and then I put electrical tape to hold them in place because obviously you can't leave the screw in there when you're assembling it okay and I just take some electrical tape about yay much. I'll just kind of put it on there like that. Make sure that's in the right spot. And just tape it like that. And I know there's, <laughs> there's probably a lot of people out there that do not like electrical tape. It does get a little bit gooey if it gets hot and old. It does work. I mean, I thought about, I could get, I could probably go buy some really big uh, heat shrink, you know, and cut out, you know, donut pieces to put on this, but I think this will work just fine. We won't have any problems. And it also gives me a little bit extra added protection. Okay, so now that that's held in place with the electrical tape, we can remove our screw. All right. And now I, I, I'm pretty comfortable kind of moving this thing around inside there. And it's really, I could have probably held this in with my fingers putting this one on. But one of the things I noticed when I was doing the other one is, is making sure this bottom one didn't slip out. So electrical tape, I know, will hold everything in place long enough for me to uh, get this back together. Okay, and I think we're actually ready to put this. We can go ahead and just mount this guy right up. I think we are ready. So I'll slide them. Just want to slide them. Oh, there we go. There we go. Excellent. Okay. I'm ready to put these this guy in, huh? And get this 
wire up. This is our ground for our PCB. This is our ground for our receptacle. All right, now we need to put those, these plastic pieces on all our receptacles here. So I'm gonna, gonna get started doing this. And uh, I'll show you a couple. I'll probably turn off the video. <laughs> this isn't this isn't rocket science, and it's not very interesting. And someone actually might know of a better way to to do this than this multi-step process of putting the screws on and that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put all the plastic on these. And I'll be back. Okay, so now that I have all the plastic pieces. Held on there with some the screws. I'm gonna go ahead and put the electrical tape on. And I just push it down like that. And like that. I don't know if you can see that. But like I said, the goal is just to hold it in place for assembly. And adds a little extra protection, I guess. Yeah, you want to make sure that the, the plastic covers the <laughs> the mount the the conductor mounting screws. Okay? So that's I'm gonna do that with all the rest of them, and I'll I'll be back. Okay, I have all the tape holding the plastic protectors on. Go ahead and remove these these mounting screws real quick. So now I I do believe we are good to go. Bend these up a little bit. We've got a probably put it over these. I, I don't remember how I did my last one, but I think I went over the, um, the power input wires. So yeah, let's go ahead and pop this baby in there. Caref carefully. <laughs> Yeah, we'll just have to work with this. There we get it. Come on. Okay. I'll snug them up a little bit. Okay. And if you're thinking it's that it's that these plugs here, you know, they're hitting the enclosure and that's what's making it hard to put in, it's it's not really. It's it's the the stiff 12 gauge wire holding these things. They kind of if you don't get them exactly lined up, you got to kind of push them around. And and uh, if you've ever worked with 12 gauge wire, you know that stuff doesn't bend easily. And we've got three. <laughs> We've got the ground, the neutral, and the and the line bolt all, wires all on there. So you got three wires per receptacle. All right. Well, I've got those in there. Okay. They all look pretty good. You can see you can see we have plenty of clearance underneath there. All right. Try to bend this back in place a little bit. Okay, yeah, let's start, uh, that's time just to connect all the wires now. Now there's a couple ways to do this. I'm gonna make it to where it's, I can take this thing apart and service it. And uh, so I'm not gonna use like crimp on connectors, I'm gonna use wire nuts. Uh, 
Okay. So here's the wire nuts I have. And uh, I'm going to use the yellow ones. It says the yellow ones are for 14 or 22 through 14. Um, but I have, they work just fine on the 12. I could even go up to the red ones. But uh, we don't. We don't need to go that big. It'll work just fine in this this wire nut. The goal is is both the wires need to be in that little spring area. So you want to make sure the wire is is nice and clean, no straggly edges off of it. You just put it on there. Make sure they're they're even, both wires or all the wires that you're using. If you're doing more than two, um, make sure they're even. And push it down on there, and you just screw it on. And you really have to put some effort into these guys. I mean, not enough to break the wires, but you want them really tight. And these things will not come off. They're used in home wiring all the time. As an added safety precaution, I am going to put some electrical tape around them, just in case. One of them decides to shake loose, which it probably won't. I'm sure all the people that hate, hate electrical tape are just screaming at me. <laughs> There's a lot of people that don't like electrical tape. All right. Okay, so we'll go ahead and push them down in there like that. All right, he's all tucked away. Okay. Now I'll go ahead and do the neutral or common. You notice I give myself a lot of slack in here instead of making it real tight and short. And I do that so I can easily move them around and, and work on it. And sometimes you can't do that if you're in an electrical box. It gets, uh, it, it gets too crowded. But uh, we've got plenty of real estate in this, in this enclosure. All right. Oops, I lined everything up. Wearing it on there. Tighten it down nice and tight. All right. And we'll just tuck them away down there. Okay, very good. See, there's one of those crimp on connectors I was telling you about. These these are kind of the same way. They've got metal inside there. You stick the wires up in there and crimp it on. Problem is, is you can't really uncrimp it. You just have to cut it off. And if I want to come back and service this later, all I have to do is take the electrical tape off and unscrew the wire nuts, right? Okay, so now we need the ground. Okay, we got that one. And we need one to go to the other side over here. Oh, I made that wire a little bit short. Hmm, I'm going to get a little longer piece of wire. All right. Ouch. Stranded wire, man. This stuff will poke you like a needle. Okay, so see how I got them all, all lined up. Even this time I'm going to use a red one. You can see it's a little bigger. To get all three of those wires in there, I'm just going to put it on there and tighten her up. And you can pull on the individual ones, make sure that nothing's gonna come out. Usually won't, if you, if you install it properly, you won't ever have any problems. The only time that I really have any problems with wire nuts is, is when I'm, if I'm putting a really small 22 gauge tied to like a, a, uh, a 12 gauge wire. Because uh, you can kind of over torque the small wire and you'll end up breaking it. But we don't have that problem here. All right. And we'll just 
just run him through here like this. All nice and tucked in there. And I'm just doing this last ground right here. Get, I don't want all these to be the exact same length. Sorry, hopefully you guys can, I'm not sticking my big paws in the, in the way of the camera there. <clears throat> All right, this one's a little tighter to get to. That hopefully we get it on there okay. There we go. Ah. All right, get them taped up. Yeah, I got another scratch on there. All right. Well, sorry to interrupt, <laughs> but I had another uh, wireless microphone uh, meltdown. And if you watched my previous video, uh, the same thing happened <laughs> in that. Um, I think last time it was uh, the cable was flaky and this time the battery died. So uh, I'm going to try to do a voiceover of what's going on here, if I can remember. Um, so I'm just talking about the, um, the receptacles right now and we just finished wiring it up. So one of the things I wanted to point out, uh, let's see here, is... Oh yeah, so these these metal uh, brackets on the back of these receptacles are normally tied to the t uh, the mounting ears or tabs on the receptacle and 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 it's grounded. But there's a um, the screw right here actually ties to that back tab, and that's what I'm saying. And so that little metal tab back there is actually going to be grounded uh, to the chassis. Uh, or the enclosure, so that that's okay. So this is going to be protected, even if a wire jumps off and you know power wire and hits that guy, and, and so that'll be protected as well. I just wanted to bring that up. So uh, and now uh, I'm going to do some testing of the unit. Okay, so we're going to redo uh, some of the testing on this uh, on this PDU, and there's a couple reasons why. The first reason is, is the audio died <laughs> with my remote mic in the middle of, right when I started testing actually. It was in the middle of the video right when I first started testing. So I wanted to go through that again. Plus I wanted to take a little more time and, and look at what we got. So first things first, I've got the, the fluke set on ohms. We're gonna test for shorts. Okay, so 0 0.2 is a direct short. All right, so first thing we're going to test is between the ground pin and the ground on the receptacles, okay? 0 0.4, 0 0.3, all right? There, there we go, right. Okay. And I'll, I'm just going to go ahead and check them all real quick. Okay. Okay, all the grounds are good. Now we're gonna, this is the common or the neutral, really, in, in our case. So let's go ahead and test the neutrals. Okay, now we're gonna check our power pin. All right. Oh, gotta be turned on. All right. Oh, and I did forget to check the front one. So go ahead and test him real quick. Let's see, we're on power. I guess I should call it 
line voltage, okay. And here's a neutral. Okay, so we know the connectivity of the new wiring we put in this is good. Okay, so now we're gonna check for shorts. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on the ground pin and I'm gonna check the, the line and then the, the neutral, okay? So on the ground pin, oh, it's, <laughs> it says one meg, okay? Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay, so we don't have any shorts between the ground, the ground and any of the lines. Now we'll just check between the power line and the common. Okay. Oh, that's power. Yep. Okay, that's that's about right. You have to remember it's going through that circuitry. That's inside there. 477K. Okay, and if we turn it off. Yep, we, we're dead. Okay. Excellent. Very good. Okay, so now we're going to test between the ground pin on the plug, which this is isolated ground, right? And the, and the case ground, right? Okay. Nothing. And the re what's making it jump up is if I put my hand on it, <laughs> we're getting, we're getting connectivity between, between me touching the case. And see, I have my finger on on this guy right here. If I put a, I could put a clip on it and then I could, it probably, there we go. So now I can touch it and move around without having to worry about it. But I don't see, yeah. Oh, yep, that's the ground inside there. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm just touching around. Okay, so we have no, connectivity between the ground pin and the case, okay? So I know that electrically this is good, right? There's no shorts between any of the pins and the enclosure, so it's it's safe to, to handle, right? And, and it's on, I believe it's on. Nope, oh, it's off. Now it's on. Okay, and we've got our, our power, our ground, and our surge light up. And we're going to go ahead and let's, let's check the, some voltages, okay? Make sure this thing is working okay. So first between the line and the neutral. Okay. 125 volts AC. I, I hope you guys can see this okay. So I'm not going to go through and check all the other ones. We know the connectivity is... There we go. We know, we just, we just checked the the connectivity between all the plugs, we know they're all good. So I'm not going to go back and check the voltages in all of them. We, well, yeah, let's go ahead. Just so everyone is, is assured this is going to be okay. Okay. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check between the, uh, the enclosure and the line side, the enclosure and the, the neutral, and the ground and the enclosure, okay? And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just clip my negative lead on there. Okay, so first off, between the enclosure and the line side, 
getting about 110 volts all right <laughs> so let's uh let's see what is it to the ground here or to the neutral here okay so we got about 125 volts from the line to the common yeah into the isolated ground and so this thing is acting like a I mean obviously we're not getting 110 volts across the end of the case so the line side is swinging up right to 125 volts and the case is floating right so it's 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 like measuring half a capacitor so it's it's like an open-ended capacitor and I don't know maybe sitting on this bench yeah <laughs> Yeah, sitting on the bench actually made a difference, right? It dropped down, and um, and uh, but what we're really interested in. So anyway, that doesn't really mean uh, a whole lot because we've got in the line side. But what's really interesting is what, how much, and and that's this is all a capacitive coupling effect. What happened is 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 uh, the electronics in this in this PDU. Or you know, get are pretty close to the enclosure. It's not really shielded inside there, and so as the as the AC the mains voltage swings, it's going to transfer some of that swing to the enclosure, right? And that's uh, called capacitive coupling. So the real interesting one is going to is going to be how much voltage is going from the enclosure to the the ground right and I just so happen to have a uh, a ground right here this is uh, this is a actual pigtail coming out of the um, the wall socket right here so it's plugged in right here I'm just this is the ground wire right here this actually is a Molex connector that goes to the barbecue controller and I'm working on another video on our open IOT channel but yeah, so we want to see, okay, we're getting some capacitive coupling. All right, how much voltage is going to be transferring between the case and the equipment ground, right? And so we'll just go ahead and, and measure that real quick. And it looks like about uh, 1.36 volts, 1.4 volts, something like that. That's not a lot, but <laughs> let's see. Let me lift it up. Oh, there we go. Now we're about now we're about ten volts, right? And if I could, so the uh, static mat is actually um, dampening it. It looks like a little bit. And if I could get it up on something, let's see here. There we go. <laughs> now the uh, now we got about 16 volts of uh, capacitive coupling as coming from the case going to the equipment ground. All right. So that's that's pretty interesting. It, there should be hardly zero. <laughs> Look, I can I can change it just by by touching it. Um, there should be zero current or very very little current going through it. Which we will um, we'll probably measure in a uh, in a future video, okay? But this this looks okay. I'm I'm not too worried about that. All right. All right. I'm gonna put the lid on this guy. All right, well, so I've had my remote mic batteries not only die in the transmitter, but also in the receiver. I don't know how much audio you heard. I might have to do some voiceover when I, when I edit this, because it died and I stopped, and it stopped recording me. Anyway, so I'm still putting the screws in. Excuse the reach.
Okay. All right, so now that kind of gives us an idea of how much I need to bring these, this uh, back panel back in. You can see it kind of, this side's almost all the way back, and, and then it kind of goes out. So what I'm going to do, since this one is close, I'm going to go ahead and put a screw in there. That'll help with, with uh, the lining of the other ones. Back that off a little bit. All right, so now we got to get this guy in and this guy here. Okay, so what I did is I just went and got a little bit of a clamp, and uh, I'm making sure not to put the clamp on the receptacles. I don't want to break them, and I just have it kind of clipped to the both sides to get so I can get these holes aligned, right? So, yeah, that looks that looks pretty good, huh? Let me go get that other one. That looks those look very nice, don't they? It looks just like he bought them in a store. I'm gonna put a label on there so I I know that these are isolated ground receptacles and that the enclosure will need to be racked to have proper grounding. So everything the surge light is confusing, but <laughs> when the uh, when the LED is on. That means it's protecting against surge. And it's got a good ground, and it's got power, all right? Don't forget, you can support the Network Engineering video blog by donation using a credit card and PayPal or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, that's it for this video. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. That helps and hit the subscribe button, that really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.